Welcome everyone. Thank you, Gail. Welcome to the ninth of our 11 series session on core values, um, Sterling core values. Uh, thank you all again for joining us this week. My name is Laura McNeil, Sterling Master Examiner. Um, just as a reminder, we um, define the core values as basic elements of how we go about our work. They are the practices that we exercise every day or we should be using every day in everything that we do. Each of our 11 sessions in the series is designated to highlight one of the Sterling core values in a seven minute leadership brief, followed by a Q&A session. And today's core value is societal contribution featuring Sterling Master Examiner, Gordon Klein. Gordon is the owner of Reflect Excellence, LLC. And uh, just before I turn it over to Gordon once again, I would like to remind everybody to please submit questions through chat so that when we open up our Q&A, we can address your uh, questions after the briefing. So at this time, I will turn it over to Gordon, Gordon Klein. Thank you very much, Flora. And uh, I've got to admit, it's a little bit daunting trying to follow Dr. Corus's presentation, but I'm gonna give it my best shot. I'm gonna just get my clicker in place. All right. And as always, technical difficulties when I don't meet them. All right, this is, as Laura said, the ninth of 11. This is a discussion of one of the core values of the Sterling framework, all of which revolve around the core value of systems perspective. I'm gonna discuss societal contributions. Societal contribution is probably one of the more difficult core values to identify and exercise, but I think we're going to get through there today and, and give you guys some, some tips on how to, how to increase your societal contribution. Societal contributions are more than your core business. They're, they're more than the, the donations and the time that you give for uh, various charitable organizations, and they do require a systematic review. Societal contribution really does build not just workforce engagement, but customer engagement. Contributing to society really is embedded in the core functions of many, many businesses. I mean, hospitals save lives. Police protect the public, both the persons and the property. Homeless shelters, department of children and family go out and they help people who can't help themselves. Even grocery stores are bringing food to neighborhoods to people that need to be able to purchase and, and eat the food. I mean, if you're one of these businesses, if you recognize how your business itself contributes to society, take pride in that, swell your chest, raise your head um, and brag it. But to use the Goldilocks scenario, this is too much about your business. Businesses also tend to contribute time and money to society is, is a team building exercise, is, uh, is a way to try to give back. Things like Habitat for Humanity, a uh, Christmas connection, which gathers gifts for, for families in need, United Way, helping at homeless shelters, um, donating to hospice, many, many others. But this is too little about your business. Societal contribution is about what your business Societal contribution is about what your business itself can do to, to help contribute um, to society as you go along. Look at your business and look at your neighborhood. What can you do as an organization to be a good neighbor, to be a good professional, to be a good citizen and a good partner? What your business can do outside of its core value to contribute to society is the definition of societal contribution. There are some, some things that you can do to, to make this more systematic. Um, the International Standards Organization has issued 
guidance on social responsibility in ISO 2600. But I find very practical the tool that's provided in ISO 14001, which is the environmental management tool, in that it encourages all businesses to use an aspects impacts analysis. An aspects impacts analysis takes a look at all aspects of your business, how you do your business, um, whether people are driving to work and parking in your parking lot, how goods and materials are shipped to your business. And in 14,001, it's asking you to look at all those aspects and see if there's an environmental impact that you could or should take some action on. I'm going to encourage you to take that same tool and ask the question, is there a social impact that I could and should take some action on? This is not instinctual to a lot of businesses, but COVID gave us some practices. When COVID came in, we had to look at just about every aspect of how we provided business, whether we encouraged carpooling or not, and how did the fact that we had a highly uh, contagious disease running through our country, how did that make us relook at and reevaluate the aspects of the business based on its impact to the health of our employees and our customers? determining what we could or should change about our day-to-day -day practices in light of COVID. Using an aspects impact analysis like that, just in light of the overall society, in, in light of how you affect your neighbors, in light of how your organization is contributing to and affecting your profession, how your organization is contributing to society as a whole, um, will really let you systematically build up and work on the societal contribution for your business. Societal contribution for your business is really managing the side effects of what you do. Not core aspects of your business, but the side effects, the transportation, the time, the traffic impact, pollution, if you contribute to any, um, how you affect the neighborhood, how you affect the businesses around you. Can your staff, by taking lunch at a local business, build business in your neighborhood? Earlier when I said, think about um, your neighbors, think about your profession, think about being a good citizen to the United States as a whole, and think about being a partner. You can do so much more if you partner with other organizations that are doing, uh, trying to achieve the same goal as you do. What's on the screen is the 4G Ranch. This is a wetlands environment built artificially by Pasco County, the Southwest Water, Florida Water Management District, and the 4G Ranch of private industry to take basically what was a waste material of Pasco County and create wetlands, create wildlife habitat, and create water recharge that will help ensure water availability throughout the region for years and years and years to come. Societal responsibility is, is, is those extra efforts you take for the side effects. And if you partner with people that have a similar goal, similar impact they want to do, it can be so much magnified. And my time is done. Well, thanks, Gordon. That was very insightful. You know, most of the time when I think of societal contributions, I'm thinking about the positive things we can do for our communities. And I don't normally, like you mentioned, think of the knee-jerk reaction to the negative things that our business can do to our communities. And that's a societal contribution in and of itself. It's not just you know, the purposeful, like you said, volunteering, but it's also being responsible for what we do. Very insightful, you got me thinking on that one. And, and it was interesting because it was even on the COVID slide you had. So um, talk about the impact that something has had to our global, even global communities, COVID has had a big one. It's really pushed us to come outside of our box and think about things differently. And uh, I think, honestly, I think we're probably a lot more resilient for it, for it all, but uh, that's very insightful. Thank you, Gordon. So my summary notes, let me go to them real quick. Societal contributions are more than the business. They are embedded in the core functions of our organization. And to your last point, they're actually indicative of the things that our organization does within 
our communities could be positive and could be negative, right? So um, good perspective there. Societal contributions inspire employee and customer engagement. And then I wrote down two tips on getting started. Determine a sphere of influ influence, excuse me, to help define scope for societal contributions. So I'll repeat that. Determine a sphere of influence to help define scope for societal contributions. And then I loved your slide on think big. Think big, expand focus beyond the organization and extend that focus to your partners. Very, very good. So let me see what questions do we have in queue. I'll start with this one. How does the recent trend towards virtual engagement align with core value opportunities for societal contribution. Did you get well, that? I think that's gonna be different for every business, but I can speculate off the top of my head for many businesses, um, they have migrated from having people come to their physical location and are now transporting stuff, uh, ordering online and transporting stuff via trucking. And that changes the impact on parking lots, on storm water, on roads. Um, so that may be a, a change in societal effect in your neighborhood and in your community. Um, another thing that has happened is a lot of organizations have taken their in-house training and gone virtual with it. If you have valuable in-house training, perhaps it could be of value to some people in your neighborhood as well or in your professional community as well. And now that you're virtual, perhaps you can invite some people to join the training, maybe some people with a little less, uh, a less advantage than, than your employees have to, to learn some things as your employees learn some things and build and grow themselves. Right, that was good. That's something to think about, definitely. Thanks, Gordon. Mm -hmm. um, can you provide an example of a systemic review that is performed on societal contributions? Um, well, the last organization I worked at uh, put in place a very systematic process as new positions became available. If the positions did not require things like a, a commercial driver's license or a college degree, they looked first at the local uh, battered women's shelter, at the homeless shelter, at work release programs from prison. And I can tell you some of the people that I got the privilege to work with over the last 10 years, um, came from that background. And once they were given the opportunity for a job in our community, by our community, they were some of the hardest working and most inspirational people, uh, employees that we had. And that program grew from the department I worked with to a citywide program um, and a much more formalized program called Tempo to help take our job openings and apply them to our community needs. Wow, that sounds like a great example of a win-win all around. Yeah, and I can tell you, I mean, I'm not kidding. There's a gentleman I know that spent 15 years in prison for a serious drug violation and came from a, a violent past. One of the, the best workers for uh, the city of Tallahassee and spends his free time going around talking to at-risk youth to keep them from doing that. And if we hadn't given him the opportunity, uh, he wouldn't have had that, he wouldn't have taken that opportunity and he pays back way more than we put in. Well, that's a great, great good news story. Thanks for sharing that, Gordon. Mm -hmm. um, one last question, we're coming up on time. What other professional reference resources can you suggest, suggest other than ISO, ISO, International Standards Organization? Well, the obvious one, of course, is the Sterling Management Framework. If you uh, reach out to Sterling and get a hold of the resource guide, there's very good descriptions of silo contributions. And if you read through the criteria, where they ask the questions lets you know where to build it into your systems. Um, but honestly, I would say your best resource is to read the news. And whatever comes up in the news, like right now, uh, supply chain is a big thing. Take what's coming up in the news, and instead of asking, how does this affect me? Reverse that question and say, how do I affect this? And should I take some action to mitigate or expand my contribution to this societal concern? All right, I like that answer. That's a good one. And it's a great way to wrap it up. 
Um, as a reminder, everyone, please check in at floridasterling.com for additional content from our series sessions and this session today. Uh, my summary notes will be posted out there as well. And if you've enjoyed today's session, please feel free to share the registration link with others. We have two more sessions to come. We'll wrap up before the end of the year and we'll follow in January with a putting it all together session that we hope you'll find um, enjoyable. Um, don't forget to tune in same time next week for our next seven minute Sterling Core Value Leadership Series Briefing. It will be with um, Sterling Master Examiner, Nicole Solomon on organizational learning. And Nicole is the Regional Program Manager, Office of Economic Self-Sufficiency, Department of Children and Families Manager. She'll be joining us um, next week. So thank you all for choosing to spend some time with us today. And I hope you make it a great day and hope to see you next week.